Hey, my name is Austin Gill, and this video is actually going to be a bonus episode for the AI video series that we released a while back. So if you haven't watched that series yet, I'd encourage you to check it out because this video is going to look at the current architecture that we went with that project. And we're going to look at ways that we can modify the architecture to make a better experience for both us as application developers and for the end user. So let's get started. The current version of the application is pretty basic. It's just two uh, inputs that a user can provide uh, two opponents to. And once submitted, the application will start streaming back some AI generated response of who would win in that fight. And the architecture is also a little bit simple. Uh, if we see here, we have a client which sends a request to a server that's hosted in the Akamai Connected Cloud. Uh, we have a little uh, tuxedo emoji person, because that kind of looks like a waiter or a server. And when the request comes in, it's actually going to forward, well, it's going to build up a prompt using the two inputs that the user provided. It's going to build a prompt to send to OpenAI, which we have represented here by a I emoji, you get it? AI. And that's going to generate a streaming response, which goes back to the server and back to the client. Now, technically this works fine, but there's a couple of problems I have with it, uh, particularly around what happens when a user or different users send the same two opponents or make the same request uh, to our server. Technically that's going to build the same prompt and send it to OpenAI, and it might be faster and more cost effective if we just kind of store a version of that on our server somewhere. Now there is one caveat to doing caching of these open AI responses, and that is whether you want your application to be uh, non-deterministic, meaning for the same input, it produces a different output. But let's assume that you're okay with just responding with the same result if we've been asked that question before, who would win in a fight? We assume it might be the same person if we made that determination. So by storing the responses for different opponents uh, somewhere on the server, we can reduce the number of requests that have to go to OpenAI, which can one, reduce the amount of latency the user has to wait for the response to come back, and two, save us money because we are not making as many API requests to the third-party service. So here's what that architecture might look like. We have the client that makes a request to our server in the cloud. Uh, the server on the first request is going to make the request to OpenAI and get that response. Now notice these little dots. These represent uh, requests that could potentially be uh, optional. So when that response comes back from OpenAI, of course we're gonna pass that to the client, but we also might write it to somewhere like a database so that the next time a client comes in with the same request, we can check whether that request exists in the database. And if it does, just respond with that. And by doing so, we can reduce some of the use for OpenAI and potentially speed up the responses. Now, this is probably a good start, especially if we put the server and the database in the same region, it's going to be a really quick response time between the server and the database. However, as our application becomes more popular, we'll start getting users from all over the world. And so the fact that we have sped up some of the duplicate requests by going to a database won't necessarily help uh, the speed for those users because the bottleneck might then become the request time from the client to the server in the first place. So we can start addressing that concern by moving some of the compute closer to the end user uh, by introducing the edge. Now in this architecture, the edge here is this blue box represented by uh, this knife emoji, because it's got an edge. Now, if you're not already familiar with the concept of the edge, you can think of it as a network of globally distributed computers that know how to receive a user's request and route that request to the computer or node that's closest to the user. Now, the canonical example of the edge is often a CDN or a content delivery network. And those focus on delivering assets, static assets, from as close to the user as possible. So you can really reduce the amount of response time for things like images or fonts or uh, JavaScript files. However, in recent years, the edge or CDNs have evolved to also offer things like edge compute. So you can do dynamic processing at the edge. And that's what we're going to look at a little bit in the architecture today. 
So if we look at this architecture, we can see I'm using uh, the length of the arrows to represent distance. We have the edge is very close to users. The cloud may be somewhat far away. And this layout is more or less the same as the previous example, except that we've introduced this edge layer in between the cloud and the client. So now what happens is on an initial request, the client's request will go into the edge. If you're using Akamai, this would be the edge workers. And then that first request may pass through to the server, which could then go to OpenAI and make that uh, pass the prompt in and then get the response back and send that back to the edge worker. Now here's where things get interesting. In the previous example, we had a database to store the cache of the responses. In this case, uh, we're going to put those that data at the edge alongside the edge worker, because if we ha if we were using a database in the cloud, it would still be a long time if the edge worker had to go to that database and look for uh, whatever cached responses we have. But by moving them to a uh, KV store, which is common in most edge architectures, in, in Akamai, it's called edge KV, and it's a key value store. So what we can do is when we get that response, we can go ahead and plop that in the key value store at the edge so that any subsequent requests with the same input can be checked in the edge worker, uh, looked up in edge KV. And if we have that sort of same request that we've made in the past, we can just pop that back to the edge worker and send that to the client right away with very, very little latency. So any request that has not been cached, will go ahead and do this uh, optional dot 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 uh, arrow and follow the normal path, come back to the edge, get stored in the cache, and as such be available for the next time someone makes the same request. So I really like this architecture because now we've addressed both uh, what happens when someone makes the same request multiple times. We're now storing a version of it cached somewhere so that we're not eating up more of those API resources. And we've moved some of that compute and some of that storage right next to the user so that if they make a request, it will be handled as in the, uh, in the edge node as close to them as possible, therefore getting almost immediate response times. You know, so far, we've been focusing on the text-based responses from OpenAI, but the application we built also uses AI-generated images. And when you're dealing with images, there's other considerations to make around delivery and storage. So I'm sure that the folks at OpenAI have thought about this and use some sort of uh, CDN and object storage that makes sense for their situation. But my biggest concern that I want to address is what happens if we rely solely on their infrastructure to deliver our images? We may want to actually move that into something that we control, uh, which I have represented here. So here we have the same uh, edge worker integration that uh, talks to the server and gets the uh, text-based responses. But when we ask for an image, that image is going to come back from OpenAI in a JSON sort of string that provides the URL for the image. And we have just been responding with the URL and showing it on the application. A different architecture that we could do is move that uh, image as it comes by into uh, an object storage that we control in our cloud. And that way we'll be providing our own URL for the image, which we can store in our key value or our data caching storage. So we can have uh, for a given prompt, we might have the text response and the image stored at the KV level. So we're no longer going back to a central server and we get fast responses. And that URL might point to something like object storage. Now on the first request, when the user makes a request to the uh, object storage URL, instead of going directly to the object storage, what we might want to do is front the object storage with a CDN so that the user, uh, similar, similar with the edge worker uh, in the edge, the user's request would go to the edge, look up in the CDN if that URL has passed through that node before. If it hasn't, it can go and grab the image from object storage, which we've stored there and then it comes back and then it can get cached here so that any future requests from the same user or any user in the same region as that edge node uh, will actually get an almost immediate response from the CDN location. 
Now, this last architecture is a little bit more complicated because things are moving around a lot more. Uh, hopefully with the diagram and the explanation, it was able to make sense. And if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the comments below. I was just thinking that uh, we didn't build this ourselves necessarily, but this would be a very useful uh, architecture or information, hopefully to those of you building AI applications and start thinking about things that we don't necessarily think about when we just make a request uh, through a proxy to an AI server. Service. So hopefully this was helpful. Now there's a couple other benefits to introducing the edge uh, to your application architecture that we haven't discussed. So far we've been talking about delivery and performance and storage costs, um, but there's other benefits that we can get in terms of security by introducing a layer uh, of the sort of edge in between the client and your server. For example, a lot of edge providers such as Akamai also introduce uh, security tools like denial, distributed denial of service protection that can prevent uh, too much traffic from attacking your servers and causing it to go down. Or you can introduce uh, application API security, which allows you to monitor sort of features of network traffic and block it at the edge programmatically if you would like. Uh, or you can have, uh, when you have a, a large network of the edge that is monitoring traffic coming uh, around the world, they can provide some smart detection of bots and essentially block any sort of bots from reaching your servers, which can help reduce the amount of costs and the load on your server. And all of these services are really nice because they can one, obviously protect from a security perspective, but two, by removing some of the traffic that would be uh, coming to your server and stopping it at the edge, you can also reduce the amount of workload or the costs or the potential downtime on your server. So a lot of great benefits. Okay, I think that's it for today. Uh, thank you very much for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know either in the comments or by hitting that like button. It really means a lot to me. And if you want more videos like this, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as they come out. Hopefully soon, I'm gonna get one out on caching. So I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And until then, have a good one.